Ladies and gentlemen, this is the fifth video uh, in the tutorial series on Scilab and XCOS. Uh, so in this lecture, we are going to uh, first explore what uh, XCOS is. XCOS is essentially the analogous uh, part to Simulink if you are a MATLAB user. So it's essentially the modeling environment and uh, what is most used in simulation. So from applications, just uh, you have a shortcut for XCOS. Once you click XCOS, uh, yeah, so there are two windows which are going to be opening in XCOS. So I'll tell you about these windows right about now. So, yes, this window is the diagram window, uh, and the one on the left is the palette browser, right? So, uh, we'll, we'll get into the functionalities of each in a moment. Uh, for for now what we need to know is that the palette browser contains the tools that we'll be using in the modeling environment. So uh, we'll be starting with the very basics. So first uh, let's see how we add two numbers. So let's just take two constants. Right? So what we do is we go to sources. This is where we need to go. So this is how we program the inputs. So let's take a constant. Just drag and drop. Let's take two constants. Okay, so these are our inputs. So uh, these are different only in the fact that this is a constant scalar and this is a constant matrix. So constant matrix can also be used in this regard, but I'm just doing it to avoid uh, confusion. So after we do this, we go to mathematical operators. Under mathematical operators, we uh, take summation, uh, summation and just bring it over here. Right. So if we zoom in, we can see something of interest. We can see that there's a plus and a minus, right? So in order to understand what this is, just double click on it. And so here we need to specify the number of inputs for the summation function and their sign vectors. So whether or not we want to add them or do we want to subtract them. So if you want to purely add them, just remove the negative signals, right? So this is a list of all the inputs. So we have two items in the list and both of them have a sign of plus one, which means that we'll add. So as you can see now, the minuses have gone away. Uh, so then what we need to do is we need to connect the output. Just drag and drop, just drag and drop, right? So this will ensure that the operation gets done. But in order to actually get the output, you go to sinks, take the FHM button and put it here. We put a clock in, we'll get more into functionalities a little bit later on. So we just connect these. This is because it's all dynamic simulation. We'll get into it later on, do not worry. So let's run it. And we see that it's working. So if you want to change any of the constants, let's say 10 plus 20. Yep. So let's run this and see. Right. So you see how that works now in case we were to let's say I don't know have another element right so just let's take another constant now we see that we only have two ports so there's no more port you can't override an existing port I mean let's just see if we can do that no you can't do that because there's a red dot here so in order to actually do that what we need to do is we go to the summation function and we add a third term right so we add another term and if you want to add it, let's add it. Right, so right now it should be giving us a result of 31. Let's see if it does. Yes, it does. Okay, so uh, let's say we wanted to subtract any of these terms. Let's say we wanted to subtract 20. So what we can do is 20 is the second term in the input. So we just substitute it with minus 1. And that's going to take care of it. So this is going to be 11 minus 20, right? So cool. we get, let's see if it's negative 9. 
yes it is so yeah these are the basics of uh, using the summation block uh, we'll just take each operation as its own video because i don't want to overwhelm anybody with a lot of mathematical operations so if there are any questions uh, you can leave it in the comments below i'll try to address them as fast as possible thank you so much